Welcome back everyone. Thanks for checking out another video. It's finally time to do an update on my 8th gen Civic Si. Uh, if you've seen any of the videos of this car, this is my 2008 Civic Si. Uh, about 10 months ago, I turbocharged it with a PRL turbo kit and technically I sold it to a friend of mine and he's been driving it. Uh, I, I just have too many cars. so. He's been enjoying it and driving it and uh, we've done a few updates on it and I felt it was finally time to put it back on the dyno, see how it's doing 10 months later. I think he's only put like three or 4,000 kilometers on the car because it is like a weekend car for him. Um, but it's more than I would have put on it because I never drive it. My RSX is here and I think I've maybe put like 200 kilometers on it since I finished it. But uh, yeah, uh, for anyone that's new or hasn't seen many of the videos, there is a whole playlist on this car. I did a whole bunch of cool videos on this car. I did like a intake comparison, a throttle body test. I think I showed you how to tune VTC and uh, like introductory to flash pro tuning. Um, this car has seen a lot of dyno pulls. Um, I think it's at 94 dyno pulls on my dyno since uh, I started like messing with it. So today the plan is to get it back on the dyno, see how much power it's making 10 months later, uh, make sure it hasn't lost any power. Uh, and then maybe get the boost controller working because the boost controller wasn't working last time I had it on the dyno and we weren't able to raise the boost. So I want to raise the boost, see how much power we can make on the fuel system that it has because it does still have the returnless fuel system. Um, so we're gonna be limited in that, in that aspect. It has a, I believe it was a DW65C pump and we're gonna see how much power we can get on a returnless fuel system with that pump and 1000 cc injectors. We also did a clutch. The last time it was on the dyno, it was still running a stock clutch. It was running a stock ninth gen clutch because this has a ninth gen transmission in it. And we, at the time I put a ninth gen stock clutch in it. Because when I did that, I didn't think it would be turbocharged at some point. But anyways, we ended up putting a comp stage two clutch in it. It's a comp stage two, it's their kit that comes with a flywheel and a revised pressure plate design, a slightly bigger friction disc. I'll see if I can find the part number and put it in the video here. But this is, it was a kit that came with a lightweight flywheel and the clutch kit, and it is a very streetable clutch. It is a full face, not six puck, not like, not a metallic style clutch. So it's actually really nice to drive. Um, so yeah, it has upgraded clutch now, so it should be able to hold more power. And uh, we're gonna raise the boost, see how much power it makes. But first things first, let's get it strapped down to the dyno. Do a pull as is, see how much power it's making. Today, it's a little bit hotter. I did tune it in November, and today is September, and I think we're in the 80s today, so it's pretty warm. But it'll be interesting to see how much power it's making 10 months later, hotter day. Haven't touched the tune since I did it back in November, but uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, guys, car strapped down, ready to go. But before we get started, for anyone that's new, this is my 2008 Honda Civic Si. Uh, the car has a little over 330,000 kilometers on it. It's the original engine. I bought this car a while ago basically to use for the YouTube channel to uh, experiment on and do videos. And, uh, but today is all about seeing how it's doing. And uh, it was interesting. I, I looked up the dynograph and this was the last dynograph of when I tuned it back in November. And it made uh, 421 horse, 288 foot-pounds torque. The funny thing about this car is I've done a lot of dyno pulls, 94 dyno pulls with this car. Today is pretty warm. It is September. It's 87 degrees in here versus I'm sure it was much cooler back when I tuned it in November. So it'll be interesting to see how the tune's doing. I haven't touched it since I tuned it back then. So yeah, let's uh, get it up and running and see how much power it makes as is. And then we're going to dive into the boost controller, raise the boost and see how much power we can get out of this fuel system. All right guys, car's up and running, basically ready to get started tuning it. I downloaded the tune off of the ECU using the Flash Pro, uh, and now uh, just got it up and running. Car is up and running, it's up to temp. It is 187 degrees Fahrenheit coolant temp. Currently intake air temps, 97 degrees. I actually loaded up the last dyno pull from when I tuned it in November, and just to see where we, where we left it off, and uh, Intake temps back then were 70 degrees, and we ended up running, what was this? Like, basically just under 10 pounds of boost. You can see, like, it's like 9.5, 9.8. Uh, so, yeah. So that's where we left it off. It'll be interesting to see where it is today with the boost controller still off. 
inside the dyno area. Where we at? You can see over there, 89 degrees today. So not ideal, but good test. To, I tune this car essentially in the winter. It's summer now. I'm gonna see how rich it goes and uh, see what power it's making at these warmer temps. So let's, uh, let's do some pulls and find out. First pull, uh, basically same amount of boost, 9.7, 9.6, 9.8, same amount of boost, uh, super rich. Uh, it's just because it's so hot today, it's not using the same amount of fuel from the original tune in November. Because these ECUs are tuned using speed density, it's not really using a mass airflow sensor anymore to determine how much oxygen's in the air. When it's hot and muggy out, it's gonna run richer. So it is pretty rich today, but let's go show you what it made. All right, guys, so the Dynograph is all squiggly because Dynajets sometimes have issues getting a nice RPM signal. And for whatever reason, didn't get a good clean RPM signal on that pull. So, if, but if I switch it to from our engine RPM to vehicle speed, it looks cleaner. And then we see what the difference is. So bit rich up top, caused it to lose a little bit of power. Uh, 10 months later, 20, 30 degrees more intake air temp, and we are at uh, 408 wheel horsepower, basically the same torque, 287. The missing torque here is because we lost the RPM signal and Dynajet needs an RPM signal to calculate the torque, but it was clean up until here. So I'm gonna see if I can relocate the RPM pickup, <clears throat> which is over here and see if we can get a cleaner RPM signal for the rest of the tune today. Um, and then I'm gonna hook up the boost controller. The boost controller is right here. The lines are here. Basically just need to, I think this one's actually dead. That's what the issue was last time. So I'm gonna get a different one, install, install a, a new one, hook up the lines and then raise the boost and see what we can get out of this thing today. So let's find out. All right guys, boost controller is working now. Set it all up um, using minimal boost control. So yeah, basically just replace the solenoid, connect it to the existing wire that I put in. I believe it was 25% duty cycle, which is kind of the minimum, but I'll jump over to the screen in a second. Uh, I did see a peak peak of 13 PSI of boost. And uh, this is pull number three for the day, I guess. Or no, pull number two for the day. Uh, on the old tune, just raising the boost, and we hit, uh, what is this, 460, 315. It seemed like the fuel system was fine, but let's go take a look and see what kind of duty cycle we're running on the injectors and what the max PSI we hit was. All right, guys, so I'm editing this video, and I realized I messed up the clip of me reviewing the data log that day at the dyno. And uh, so what I've done is I've loaded up my 
tuning laptop with the data log of that dyno pull. And I'll just quickly show you all the, the details of that dyno pull. Um, so what I have up on here on the screen is basically just that full pull. And we start the run, it's basically like 2,500 RPM and you floor it and boost starts building. Uh, you can see I've requested 25% duty cycle for the boost controller and boost starts building. We have, let's see, we, it ramps up, starts really ramping up around 46. We have eight pounds there and we have essentially full boost where it starts to like, the boost starts to plateau. That's about what, like 5,100, 5,200 um, and we follow the rest of the pull and boost continues to creep a little bit. We see a peak of around, I think it's like 13. Yeah, so 13 PSI, air fuels are still rich, which is to be expected with the 100 degree intake air temps. Um, but 91% uh, duty cycle. Follow out the pull to the end, which is basically 84, 8500 RPM. We're at 93% duty cycle. Um, Air fuels are still basically where they should be, a little rich, but that's because of the temps, and that's about it. So yeah, thought I'd share that with you guys, and now we can jump back to the rest of the video. All right, guys. So I think I think that's just going to be one and done for this. Uh, I don't need to mess with the tune. I'm pretty happy with how my tune performed, and all I really needed to do today was turn on the boost controller and first shot, boom, 25% duty cycle. And we, I think I got it basically exactly where I wanted it to be. 90% uh, duty cycle on the injectors is the safe limit, essentially. So technically, I shouldn't really push it any further. Um, and we made 460 wheel horsepower, 315 foot-pounds torque. Uh, in blue is the old tune when it was at basically almost 10 pounds of boost back in November. So blue, the original. Uh, red today and yeah I don't know pretty happy with the uh, 460 wheel horsepower um, there's definitely more in this engine I I've tuned many 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 k20 z3s on pump gas this is on pump gas today it's 94 octane pump gas from Petro Canada here in Canada I've tuned these engines uh, on 91 uh, up to an over 500 wheel horsepower and I would like to see this car at 500 horsepower but the we don't have enough fuel pressure. The issue with returnless fuel systems is fuel pressure doesn't get compensated by boot for boost. So basically what's happening is we are running 13 pounds of boost. That 13 pounds of boost is pushing against, trying to push the fuel back into the injectors. Normally, if you have a return style fuel system, you have a fuel pressure regulator that compensates for the boost. So it basically evens out. Um, but basically what's happening with this returnless style fuel system is for every PSI of boost we run, we're losing one PSI of fuel pressure, which makes, which effectively makes these 1000 CC injectors smaller. So next step would be to upgrade this fuel system to a return style fuel system so we can raise the fuel pressure one PSI basically equal. Every PSI of boost that we run, the fuel pressure gets raised that equal amount and the injectors stay that same fixed 1000 cc size so we don't run out of fuel and then realistically these 1000 cc injectors wouldn't be at 90 percent duty cycle at only 13 pounds boost they would probably be around like 65 maybe 70 percent duty cycle and we could then raise the boost even more and easily hit the goal of 500 wheel horsepower but uh this is essentially the continuation of the dyno tuning session we did back in November where I wanted to do this, but we ran into issues with the boost controller. I got it sorted out. It just seemed like it was a bad solenoid back then because this new solenoid has, seems to have fixed the problem. And uh, yeah, right off the bat, boom, 25% duty cycle and peak, 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 13 PSI of boost, 460 wheel horsepower, 315 foot pounds torque. Um, Ultimately, the plan would be to try to keep it around the 300 foot-pounds torque because I do think this clutch is going to be limited to around that amount. Maybe we can make, maybe get a little bit more torque out of it um, because it is still like a streetable, like OEM-style clutch disc. Um, but the plan would be to keep the same amount of boost kind of down low and feed a little bit more boost, maybe 15 pounds, and that would get us to our uh, 500 horsepower 
goal and maybe even raise the red line a little bit where I'm only taking it to 8,500 RPM. These engines can technically go a little bit higher, but playing it conservatively, 460 wheel horsepower, hot day and uh, maxing out, essentially maxing out this fuel system. So um, either way, I'm going to try driving it. My friend is going to take the car back and continue driving it and enjoying it. And uh, once we plan some other stuff, maybe we'll do another video, hopefully in the fall when it's much cooler. We will uh, put it back on the dyno and see how much more power it makes when it's actually cool. If I, maybe on its one year anniversary in November, we'll bring it back, put it on the dyno and see how much power it makes at this level. If we haven't already upgraded the fuel system, but realistically, we probably won't touch the fuel system till the winter time. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. I know I haven't been doing a lot of YouTube lately and uh, that is just because I've been busy, but now that it is starting to calm down and in the winter, it's usually, it's basically dead. So I intend to do a whole bunch more videos. I have, I've read all the comments and, and I, I know what you guys want to see. So I have a whole bunch of videos planned. So, um, like always, if uh, you have any suggestions, if you have any questions, put it up in the comment. I do read them. I try to respond, but it, there's so many and I'm only one person. Um, but if you do like the video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and, uh, I'll continue making these videos. I promise I will be doing more videos. Uh, in the near future. So thanks again for watching guys. Hope to see you again soon. Bye now